Alright guys, welcome to Arcade Talk Episode 1. This is a series I'm starting up about arcade hardware, software, and anything related. And for the first episode here, I thought I'd cover the Capcom Play System 2, otherwise known as CPS2. Uh, so just to cover some of the basics here, you can see I've got a few different color boards laid out in front of me. Uh, over here we've got a blue board, that's the USA version. Uh, gray board, those are the Asia version boards. And over there, the green board, is the Japanese version. There's also a few more that I don't have out here. There is a yellow topped board. That is uh, the rental version. There's an orange one. That's the Hispanic version. And there's also one that comes in an all-in-one black case. Uh, the games are not interchangeable with that. It's a motherboard and the software all in one case. And uh, those are just, they're all black. You don't see those around as much. And there's only a few games that were released like that. Uh, I've seen Marvel vs. Capcom and I've seen Gigawing and I believe Street Fighter uh, Alpha or Zero Three are the only ones that I've ever seen. There might be a few more though. Uh, so with that, uh, the, these games, as you can see on the bottom here, have a series of connectors on the bottom and plug into a motherboard. And the blue boards and the green boards, the motherboards are interchangeable between these. So these are the most desirable format to get the games in usually. The Asia gray boards are usually a little bit cheaper. They require their own motherboard, which I'll show you here. So there's the motherboard. And as you can see, this Asia version one, these are how they are in the US and the Japanese versions. The Asia version one has one that's sunk down and it has a larger connector on the game board side so that it fits in here, and that's that's why the two are not compatible. Uh, just to give you a look at the motherboard itself, the sides there, you've got a test switch and volume switches over here on the side, uh, the fan up top, and on the bottom here is your JAMA connector, and over here is your kick harness connector. So this would be considered a JAMA Plus setup and then uh, stereo audio connections. It was meant to be plugged into a Q sound amp in an arcade machine, but can also be plugged straight into a television set or receiver. Uh, so there's a look at that. Just give you a peek at the bottom of this board here, so you can see the larger connector right there, and then the other ones, that which are actually reversed. Uh, these have the pins in them, while the motherboards on the other one, the US and the Japanese version, if you can see the two, there. The differences, they're actually reversed, so again, why they're not compatible. And so, with that, the kick harness is required only for games that use more than three buttons because the JAMA standard is a three button standard. The kick harness will only be required for pretty much just the fighting game, Street Fighter, all those uh, Marvel superheroes type games and whatnot. All the other games could just be played on a regular JAMA cab or super gun setup with uh, three buttons or less. So there's that. And there's also an issue with these boards that had what was called a suicide battery in them. And that uh, battery inside held a piece of code that was crucial for the game to work on startup and once that battery died the code was lost and the game would just boot up with a black screen and you'd get nothing. And it was actually uh, a very smart guy online, he goes by the name of Rezula, he has a website that's uh, dedicated to this whole, uh, he calls it the Phoenix fix process and uh, once the game has been Phoenixed it can then be uh, accessed in any region uh, you have access to a jukebox feature in there, so you can listen to the music off of it, and it will also never die. You actually eliminate the battery. He requires uh, the program ROMs be sent to him. He reprograms them, and then once you put them back in your game and clip the battery out, uh, usually takes you know 10 to 20 hours um, for the code to get flushed out, and then the game works. And uh, you can tell if it's been Phoenixed or not by when the game boots up. It'll come up with the Capcom logo and it'll say Phoenix Edition under that. And I actually I'm just going to show you what one of these looks like on the inside. Got this one open. And this is one that I'm actually about to put Phoenix ROMs back into here. And uh, the battery was right over here. And I clipped it out because it was starting to leak. Um, and that's also a problem if 
you have these boards and a battery has not been swapped out in a while, the battery can leak and actually damage your board in here and that's not what you want. So I ended up clipping that one out and the program ROMs go right in here. I'll show you those in a moment. Also got graphics ROMs and sound ROMs in here, your processors. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty nice piece of hardware in here. So anyhow, if you just take a little flathead screwdriver, put it on each side of there. These are all socketed in here and uh, you just you know, work it very easy up on each end a little bit and uh, those chips pop right out. So this is uh, a look at the game board. This is uh, re also referred to as the B board. The motherboards are called the A board, which you'll also hear out there. And here are the ROM chips, or the EEPROM chips. They're erasable, reprogrammable, read-only memory. And you usually, when you're transporting these or when you take them off of a circuit board so that you don't get a bunch of uh, bent legs on the pins, you stick them into styrofoam and that's a good uh, transporter and uh, just to keep them protected. There's also tubes that some people put them in. Uh, that's how you can buy them also. So Anyway, there's those. They're ready to be put back into that board there. So yeah, the suicide battery, definitely something to note. Uh, I actually didn't start collecting this hardware until that fix was released and it's available for most games, not all games right now. There's a handful that cannot be fixed currently. Hopefully someday uh, they will be able to be fixed, but I myself, uh, most of my collection has been fixed already. I still have, you know, maybe a half dozen more to send out and get fixed. Um, so that's uh, good stuff though, I mean, then you know there's going to be no damage to your game, no leaking batteries, uh, no worry of any of that, and it's also cool if you have Japanese region games that you would like to play in English. Uh, I have a battle circuit board, which the, the European version of it is quite rare, and that's the only way you can play it in English, so um, once I fixed that, I was able to boot up the, the Euro version of it and then actually read the story, and that was that was pretty cool. So... I guess I'm gonna fire up one of these machines now. Let's get the TV going here. All right. Okay, you're going to see when I flick this on here, you're going to see the Capcom screen with the Phoenix logo come up. There's the Phoenix Edition logo letting you know that it's been Phoenixed. There is the, the boot screen there with the revision. It's playing in uh, USA mode right now, even though that is a Japanese version board. test menu real quick here. All these boards also have a test menu with them where you can configure options. Uh, you can also do a sound check here. You can uh, recalibrate your screen. You can do a ROM check. Um, some basic features. So, that. reboot it. There's the title screen one more time. So yeah, that's that's uh, most everything. A little basic rundown for people that are new to this hardware or looking to get into this hardware. It's it's cool stuff. You can pick up a bunch of the boards on eBay, places like that. There's other websites around the net that sell them. Um, yeah, relatively inexpensive. I mean, for a, a just a regular U.S. or Japanese version motherboard, expect to pay you know forty or fifty dollars. They're not extremely expensive. The game software itself, you could spend anywhere from probably fifty to two or three hundred dollars is what the most expensive game out there is going for so and that's just the game itself not a kit or anything that comes with artwork all that stuff would be extra but yeah it's it's cool cool hardware and hopefully you guys uh... learned something new if not you know hopefully you still enjoyed watching but uh... yeah that's about all i've got to say for this uh... right now if anybody has any questions feel free to ask and i will try my best to come up with some answers and if not direct you to somebody that can so thanks a lot for watching, guys. See you later.